Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video this is going to be more of an overview of UV unwrapping so for those of you who may not be familiar or haven't done this before uh, this is going to be more of a high level concept of what it is, how it works, why we do it and the different ways that we can approach it uh, and specifically the way that we're going to approach it for this course whilst accounting for things like performance and keeping things nice and tidy as well with all of the objects we're going to have sharing a single texture. Before we jump into that though, if you are enjoying these videos or find them useful, then please do consider going over and checking out my Patreon page. I do try to give a lot of cool additional stuff there for your support, even if you're only able to do the $1 a month support tier, you will get something back. It is greatly appreciated and it does help me focus more time away from freelance and contract work and get more of these tutorial videos out on a weekly basis for everyone. So please do check that out if you wanted to support the channel, link for that is in the description below. But let's get into the video. So what I have here, this is just a dummy test scene, you don't need to follow along, like I said all of this is mostly going to be concept, but I've got one of the rocks from the main scene that we've been working on in the other project. I have very simply applied a texture to this, and I'll go over that in more depth in the next video. So what we have now is a black coloured rock under the look view and render. I'm in the texture paint mode uh, just because I want to demonstrate a few things and just to mention as well that in this video I will be showing how to create the texture that we'll be using for the project so do stick around until the end of the video. I'll timestamp that if you wanted to skip this bit because like I said this isn't a concept overview of UV unwrapping so if you're familiar with that that may not be too useful but if you wanted to see how I'm going to be making the texture then that will be the second part of this video. But the texture that I've used here is a very simple one and I have already unwrapped this. So if I go into edit mode I have the unwrap here in two halves which is basically controlled by this seam that I've marked the red line going through the rock. Now this first way the reason like I said I'm in texture paint is to show that all this is really doing is where these seams are uh, have been laid on the model that is where we're getting our cut in the UV map. And the reason that we have a UV map is that you'd normally do this in something like a package such as Photoshop. But having these available shows you where you can paint onto the model and where it's going to apply. So we can see the painting down here is in relation to these lines over here. And of course, the great thing about using Blender for this is you can actually paint straight onto the model if you're actually in texture paint, which I forgot to do there. And you can see that this is then automatically applied to the texture over here. So this is really handy because obviously the steps of doing this in Photoshop, you don't really know exactly what's lining up where. Some of this can be slightly distorted in size. So doing it on the actual mesh makes a lot of sense if you can. Brush tools in 2.8 are actually really good. So it does add the possibility of doing that as well. But that is, like I said, just to show what the texture map actually does, what the UV mapping is actually responsible for and why we do it. Now, like I said, the other thing I wanted to cover is the difference of using this UV seam and unwrapping it this way where we get this nice tidy map compared to another way which you can do uh, which is the smart UV project. So if I just press U in here and do a smart UV project uh, this will take the best edges that Blender decides are going to be the ones to be cut. So we can see we get a lot more edges over here and the problem with that is is it's very hard to tell which part you're painting on then so if we were to paint here it's only by looking at it on the model then that we can tell that, that is this chunk over here. Whereas in comparison, when I had just the two cuts, we knew I was either uh, painting on one side or the other. And again, it can be very hard to tell where these join. So I wouldn't know by eye what that is joining to, but obviously that's joining up down here, uh, as with that little bit as well. Smart UV projects can be really, really useful. I use this a lot for game jams, and especially when we're using techniques like I'll be using here, where we're just putting everything onto a single color for like a very low poly, simple texture color sheet. Smart UV projecting doesn't really matter so much, you don't need to know exactly which bit is which, um, and I'll definitely do that a lot for simple assets like rocks, some trees, things like that, which don't really have too many layers of detail anyway. So I will be including how we can do this as well, because it can be a useful technique, but it's not going to be the one that you'll use for your more detailed and in-depth models. So now that we know why we're going to be UV wrapping and the two main different ways that we're going to be approaching this, we can move on over to a 2D software of your choice. I'm going to use Krita. So I'd recommend if you don't have anything ready for creating 2D art, texturing, things like that, I'd recommend downloading Krita. You can get it on Steam or through the website directly. It's completely free on their website. I'm not sure if the Steam version has gone free yet. And you get the full package. And when it comes to just texturing and uh, for 2D art, uh, especially if you've got something like a 
digital pen and tablet, then Krita can be almost as good, if not better in some cases, than Photoshop. Uh, and it's a really, really good, great free alternative. I personally prefer over things like GIMP. So that's what I'm gonna be using for the texturing side of this. But of course you can do this in anything if you have pixel edit or a sprite or something. We're only making a very simple color grid so you can do it in pretty much any 2D package that you already have access to. So what I'm gonna do with this is inside of Krita, I'm going to create a new project or a new file. A 512 by 512 file is gonna be perfectly fine. You can make this a lot smaller if you wanted. We don't actually need that much space. Uh, we're not too worried about performance or anything in this case. But if you're trying to keep things really, really tiny because we're using this single color grid, or multiple color single texture grid. Uh, this is a way you could put this down to something like 64 by 64. You can shrink the UVs down pretty much as much as you need to because we're not adding any pixel perfect or sort of high definition texture painting or anything in this. So you can get these really small if you're worried about performance and you're trying to keep file sizes and things down for mobile games or something. But I'm gonna go with 512 by 512. It's gonna be a lot easier to see and a lot easier to work with just for tutorial purposes. So I'm gonna hit create. And the first thing I want to do is lower the size of the brush and we move back a little bit here. So this is our texture we're gonna be using. And with this ready to go, the first thing I want to do, uh, and again, this is gonna be very generic steps. So if you're not using Krita, then you can do this in any of the uh, 2D packages, but we want to turn on our grids. So Krita, we go to settings and we want to go to dockers and then find the grid and guides. So this is gonna create a grid and guide docker over here. And we just want to enable show grid and also snap to grid is gonna be very useful for when we're painting in these areas. Now the size of this is a little bit wrong. We probably want to change this to something more like 128 pixels. And that's gonna give us a perfectly divided grid for the 512 by 512. And this is probably more colors than we're going to be using, but that is perfectly fine. Again, you can change this up if you are concerned with performance, but I just knew that this would be divided quite nicely. And then if we did want to come back and add extra colors or extra objects, and we do have a little bit of extra space here for our tile sheet. With that ready to go though, I'm gonna grab the selection tool. I'm gonna to grab the first grid here. Um, the reason I've put on the snapping is like, you can see there is that as I drag, this does kind of snap to the different uh, grid dividers, which is really handy to make sure that we're getting the correct size. I'm gonna grab the fill tool, and I'm just gonna start doing a few different colors. So we're really accounting for things like the wood color for our fence, potentially a different wood color for the post if you wanted to change that up a little bit, the color for our rocks and any of the different metal colors that you might want to put in for the bucket and the screws and things like that. Grab a color, I'm gonna start with a nice brown color over here and we can just fill this in um, as required. So I'm just trying to kind of pick some colors by eye, but this isn't too important. The main thing is that we have uh, at least four or five different colors that we can use for our texturing when we've UV'd things in the next video. Now I've just went off screen quickly and loaded up the previous scene that I've rendered out for, for the, uh, when I was concepting the models to make for this course. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly color pick and drag these into this file over here just to save a little bit of time um, as color grading and things like that are definitely not my strong point. Um, and I've kind of got a set of colors over here that work quite well. So I'm gonna stick with those. Now, what I'm using is, if you are using Krita, I'm using P to go into the color picker, if you wanted to use that, and then F to return back to fill tool. And to get the drag and select box, the sh shortcut for that is Control and R. So I'm just gonna be using a combination of those, coming back in between these two uh, files, and just pasting in and copying some colors between them. So I'll probably do this and speed it up a little bit. Like I said, just get a few colors that you're happy with that you want to get into uh, working with your models just so that you have a texture sheet to work with going forward. Okay, so with that done, that's pretty much all of the colors I think that will be making up our scene. I've got three different types of uh, color for the wood. So we have what will be our fence, our post, and the bucket, just so that they look a little bit different. We've got the color for the rocks. I think that was the color for the metal. And then we've got the darker metal that I've used for the bucket and the kind of golden nails that I've put into the band of the bucket as well. So like I said, if you wanted, if uh, you had more colors in mind, you can fill the rest of these squares up. We can leave those perfectly blank though. For now, that's perfectly fine. And the great thing about this is, like I said, if we do add more models and we want some extra colors later on, we can just fill these out, re-import the texture. As long as we keep these where they are, then the models will still, when we have all of this set up, um, 
reference the correct section with their color so that won't break any of the existing models but it will allow us to very easily and quickly put in new models and new colors and things for those and this is like i said this is why this is really really good for working in game jams and this is generally the kind of route that i go for my art styles just because you've got the limited amount of time very restricted on the kind of artwork that you can get into the game and this really helps on quick iteration and uh, making alterations midway through so with the texture grid to your liking and uh, set up and ready to go this is going to be the same in most projects in creator we're just going to press ctrl and s to save this act now the only thing that we need to do here is we're going to save the type as i'm going to set this to be a png pngs just tend to keep the full quality that you set out now of course this is just a simple sheet of colors but generally you're going to be using a lot of textures as pngs anyway when working with models so you may as well sort of get used to that kind of process even if you're doing a simplified version of it uh, give this a name i'm just going to call this t underscore grid so t for texture and then save this to a location of your choice for me i'm just going to put this on the desktop on the next pop-up you can just leave everything as it is and press ok again if we do lose any information it's not going to be too bad on this kind kind of work anyway uh, and with that done you can close down your app and we are now ready to go with the texturing inside of blender i'm going to show you how to get this new texture into blender and how we can start uv mapping onto this very very quickly so i'll leave that video here for today as always if you enjoy these videos or find them useful please do leave a like and share the video around if that always helps and is greatly appreciated and of course if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the contents coming from any of the playlists on the channel do consider subscribing and making sure you hit the notification bell to be kept up to date with those releases as ever though thanks for watching and i will see you all next time